we're doing folks welcome back welcome back to a very windy Shropshire right I wanted to give you a bit of an update to be honest because you've not seen me for a bit have you I've not gone anywhere but it's just that moving house does not do your wildlife photography or YouTube channel any good at all so flitting backward and forward yeah it's not ideal living out of boxes but like I said I just wanted to give you a bit of a channel update we found a house so the move is imminent I don't want to give too much away I don't want to show you I don't want to jinx it but I'm hoping we're, we're going to be in before Christmas hopefully and it's a fantastic place in Powys so mid Wales We've got a few acres of land and there's all sorts on there. There's foxes, badgers, red kites, buzzards, tawny owls, sparrow hawks. Oh, I can't. I just can't wait. I can't wait to get there. I'm itching to get going. So we've a ton of projects to do. We've got hides to build. Oh, we've, we've nest boxes to put up for owls and you name it. We've got cam trapping sessions to... Oh. I can't wait. Anyway, so that's enough of that. We've got that to look forward to, hopefully before Christmas. So I'm just testing a new camera as well. Changed my vlogging setup. Wanted to, you know, make it a little bit neater and that perch down here. So I'm on the Osmo Action 3, which I'm hoping the quality is going to be better. I'm filming in 4K30 at the moment. I'm hoping the sound's going to be better because it's got this dedicated mic that comes with it. It's got facial tracking, so if I move it around, the actual camera is tracking you, and I think it's a it's an absolute game changer. It's brilliant, gimbal controlled as well, so it's nice and smooth. There's a ton of features on it, so that's going to be an improvement for the channel. What I wanted to do today was, like I said, just give you that bit of an update what's happening with uh, with things and where we're at, but. I wanted to do this review because I need to get this review done and out of the way. When you take on, uh, when, when companies contact you, they give you a time limit and you know, you've got to get it out in a certain amount of time. And it's not always, always possible, but they start stacking up. So anyway, I thought, I thought long and hard to be honest, when Siri we contacted me about this, because I've already got a few decent tripods, but this one really, really piqued my interest. I mean, I think when you see it straight away, you'll, uh, you'll know why. Because probably 95%, well, maybe even more, you know, tripods that you buy, they're not really, they're useful for the wildlife photography, but they're not, they're never the right colour. They're always black or, or silver or, you know, whatever colours and, you know, bright fittings on them. But this one is specifically aimed at the wildlife photographer. Now, this is the, the CT3204. It also comes with a gimbal head as well, part of a kit. And it's got this camera, it's got a, a fantastic green anodized finish to it with this, I don't know, I don't know what you describe it as really, more like a digital camo. So I was interested in it and I've done a video before about the, uh, the merits of a, a video head versus a gimbal head and I've moved on to a, a video head because it kind of it does everything I need it to do because doing the YouTube channel you know I, I do a lot of video work so it, it suits me down to the ground but there's occasions when I go out and I'm not always filming for, for YouTube so you know the merits of having a gimbal they might come into play so that's why I decided to to give this a go also it's lighter it's lighter than me, me big TC9 with a video head because that's a fair old, a fair old lump is that, and this is a, a bit more, you know, on the uh, on the smaller side. It's it's a smaller unit when it's fully, um, you know, when it's fully folded down, and if I'm out, you know, on a bit of a mission up in the hills and that, you want to save all the weight you can, you can do. That's one of the reasons why I've gone onto this uh, the Osmo Pocket, so I can. You know, not take the Z30, a lot lighter, and you know every every ounce counts, I suppose. So, what we'll do now, 
we'll have a look at this setup here. I've got the I've got the Z9 with the 500 F4 on it, and suits it down to the ground. Let's have a closer look at it now. Okay, let's just we'll take this off first. Let the dog see the rabbit, as they say. Bob that down there. Right, first off, it comes in this rather snazzy case. Now, I'm not going to lie, I'll probably never use it. I'm not one for flying abroad and all that kind of malarkey. So, but anyway, I'll just show you that. It's a, it's a soft case, a big foam insert. Comes with a few accessories. Little bag there, we've got different feet. So we've got these that are, there we go, new camera's working all right there. Yeah, we've got them round rubber feet or the ones that I've put on, there we go, we've got the spike feet. I tend to prefer spike feet to be honest because the ground that we're usually on is usually a bit, uh, a bit dodgy. Also comes with that plate, and we can fit that plate on the side, get rid of this one, we'll show you that in a minute. So that's the, that's the case, nice to have, but I'll probably never use it. I just generally chuck them in the back of the mortar. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put all the dimensions on the screen now. I'll put the weight on, I'll put the folded height on. So that's it, that's it, fully folded down. So you can see there, it comes in two parts. We've got the gimbal part of it. So we'll undo that, there's actually a big, almost like a, a nut, if you will, that five or six turns, maybe a few more, and that's off. So, there's the tripod legs, and then that's the actual gimbal part. Now, there's a really nice feature on this. On my, my TC9, it has what's called a fast bowl. Similar principle, so there's the the top of the tripod legs and this is the underside of the actual gimbal so you can see there when you turn that you see those little there we go that's better you turn that and these little studs come out so you've got those studs there now they locate into them three recesses and effectively that locks it in position so you have no adjustment then regarding the angle you just put your this big fastening nut back on and then that is fixed okay so that is going nowhere all right that's how you, you tighten it up so once that's tight that's that's absolutely fixed and you have no level adjustment in that. So, we'll take this off again and show you the other way of using it, which is how I prefer. Because generally, you know, you set up on uneven ground, it's not always easy to, to get your tripod head level. So, again, all we do, turn them, and you can see them studs then, they go inside. What we then do, put that back on. Yep. We have our big fastening nut on the bottom. So a few turns and that's on now. But the secret to this is, there we go. <clears throat> so we'll demonstrate that now. So you imagine You've set the tripod up, you're not quite level, which that isn't. Yeah, we're sloping down that way. All you have to do now is just undo that and then you have all that adjustment in that gimbal head, okay? At the back, there's a small spirit level. So all we do, eyes on, get that bubble in the center and then even though the top of the tripod legs aren't level, the gimbal, the base of the gimbal is. So 
we've got a perfect platform then for doing our our work off it's a really nice feature is that and i thought i thought it'd be a bit gimmicky but it's the one feature that i use all the time on my other tripod and i will use that all the time as well you only have to be a little bit out for it to make a difference and just to get that head you know straight like that it's uh it's a really good idea clever clever idea so going back to the legs of the tripod these are twist locks really substantial i mean i've got quite big hands and they are they are substantial i've also tried them with a gloved hand as well dead easy you can actually turn them all at the same time so all three of them turned one two three and there you go it's a big tripod as well what i'll do i'll set it up in a minute at a distance and you can see how tall it is again not much of a turn probably i don't know maybe i don't know a third of a turn and it's locked off so really substantial yeah it's a very very stable platform other features on it so that's our fastening nut if you will good size again you know it's not too small it's not fiddly it's not square which is a good thing you know you can get your hand on that and turn it dead easy there's also a hook so really windy conditions if you've got the tripod up at full extension if it's windy especially with a big lens on you've got a 500 or a 600 on it acts like a bit of a sail so for us to clamp that down you know we want to plant it into the ground get your spikes on and then you can also hang whatever off your off your hook there i'll put the the capacity but you can hang your camera bag on there and it's going to plant that tripod into the ground and it's going to create a more stable platform for us to work off that's what it's all about so going up to the i keep knocking that i do apologize um going up to the gimbal part of it all right so it's not these gimbals they're not made for video work all right so this is more of a stills photography piece of equipment but you don't you know you should know that anyway so it's not dampened if you will so you can't you can't adjust the tension on that so it's either it's locked off or it's spinning around which is it's perfect for still stuff you know for, especially for birds in flight ideal um, there's no adjustment in that like i said it's either open or shut again nice big knurled knob on there and again even bigger on that one okay so two adjustments there again probably i don't know maybe three quarters of a turn and it's fully open and then you've got the the adjustment there on your gimbal what we'll do now i'm going to set it up over there and get this camera on it right let's get this set up as i said before one hand you can undo all them them collars one two three so we've got section wise one two three four sections and you can see already how tall it is it's a good size tripod one hand bosh 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 quick to operate another advantage of these collars the twist grips i i tend to use i you know you'll know from watching the channel i use camo quite a lot and i use the ghillie leg covers the tragopan ghillie leg covers and the one thing with the the other tripod they've got the the levers on the thumb levers and they do get snagged up a bit with these there's not going to be an issue I know it's a camo tripod you might think well why would you use camo on a on a camouflage tripod but although it's camouflaged i do like to break the outline up so that's the that's the reason why i would use the the camo you know the the leg covers the ghillie leg covers so as you can see there i've set it up a little bit out of out of kilter again small turn on that just keep your eye on the bubble eyes on that is then perfectly level and we're good to go we'll get that camera on now so it comes with a nice big plate there to go on the bottom of your your lens foot arca swiss connection 
spin it around that way. It's actually got a couple of screws on the bottom. So once that's on, even if that was to come undone and you didn't notice it, it's not gonna it's not gonna slide off. It'll only it'll only go so far and then it'll engage on that clamp and your camera won't fall off. A very expensive mistake. So setting it up. Obviously it's going to be a little bit trickier if you've got a zoom that's an external zoom because you're, you're shifting that centre of balance. But with a big prime lens like this, it's fixed. So all I tend to do, slacking it off completely, find my sweet spot. Them bolts just came into play then. Because <laughs> I, I let it go and it engaged so you can see that works a treat. Um, Passing that up. Nice bit of tension, it's not too slack. Another thing as well, I've used cheap gimbals in my time. You know, I've, I, look, I look to the price of Wimbley's and the, the like, and I just couldn't justify spending that amount of money. This isn't cheap. It's not a cheap unit by any stretch of the imagination, but it's quality. I've used it a couple of times out in the field, but straight away you can tell you can tell by the whole feel of the thing nice bearings in it when you open that up you spin that round there's no there's no lateral shift in the in the bearings where it attaches into that into that fast ball if you will and again on this if i grab that there there's no sideways movement as well so they're obviously they've used quality bearings in there which is going to make for a a piece of equipment that's going to last a long time. It feels really nice. As I said before, on or off with that, and it's rigid. It's a proper rigid bit of kit. Again, got your hook on there for hanging stuff on, and that's going to be, you know, it's it's proper. It's a proper, decent, stable platform. There's a, a screw all here, again, for putting attachments on. You know, you could put a... Um, you could put a, a speed clamp on there for attaching a light or a microphone or, or whatever, any other accessories that you, you deem fit to attach to the tripod. So we've, we've two attachments there, one there and one there. And what we'll do now, we'll show you how low down to the ground it goes because again, for me, wildlife photography, you want to get down to that level, especially shoreline stuff, you know, working wildfowl, Anything, if your subject's on the ground, you want to be eye level with it. For those premium pictures, that's where you want to be. So important again, that you get low down to the ground. Let's see how low this goes. We'll just slip this camera off for now. There we go. One, two, three. And we can do them all up in one turn with one hand. Looking at the adjustment, so we've got that's your there we go. That's your adjuster there. You've got a lever, thumb lever in, and then we've got one adjustment. One. So you've two different adjustments. Yeah. And then that just clicks in. Once it's at the at the lowest setting, if you want to get higher than that, just a case of and it's spring loaded and that clicks into position. Perfect. Right. Okay folks, so that's the tripod set to its lowest setting. We'll put it down on the ground there. So probably, I don't know, 10 inch to the tripod foot. We'll grab the camera, bob that on there. Ooh. Tighten it up and we've got a really nice working height. You get lower on a bean bag, yeah, we know that, but I don't think that's so bad to be honest. That is pretty low down. 
So probably, I don't know, nine inches, nine inches to the bottom of the, the lens hood. I think that's a, that's a good working height. And again, nice stable platform. And yeah, you're good to go. Fantastic, you know, for on them, on the shorebird shots where they're, you know, flitting up and down. Brilliant, yeah, I like it. And again, it's, it's solid is that, it's proper solid. Yeah, that's it. That's the quick review. It's not a full review because I've not used it that much, to be honest. Used it a few times and it's been ideal, but it's not a long-term review. That is, it's a Sirui CH20, okay? That's the code for the gimbal and it's a CT3204 set of camo legs. Excellent. Up to now, well chuffed with it. And the colour's superb. I really like that. You know, and it blends in really well. Quality item. Another thing as well, there's your, the gimbal part of the setup. And that's obviously the legs. Once that is detached, yeah, you've taken your big fastening nut off. This can actually be detached as well. So if you want, if you don't want a gimbal on, you don't have to. There's your, your adjustment cup, if you will. And then you can just attach your own. If you want to attach a, you know, a ball head on there or, or whatever you want, that just sits back in. Fasten your, your big nut on the bottom and you're good to go. So you're not tied to, to actually having you know the gimbal the gimbal on there you can put what you want on so that's that's fastened in now and there you go you've got your big bolt in the in the center and you're good to go so that's the that's the new Sirui camo tripod setup to get hold of them you've got to go on the Sirui store so I'll put a link in the description below check it out as I said before, it's not a long-term review because I've only just got it. Uh, I've had it a few weeks. And at the moment, my forays out in the field are a little bit uh, thin on the ground, shall we say. I've actually got a few films in the can, but I haven't got the, the end results. So we're on with a, we've got a barn owl project that's ongoing. I'm having a nightmare with that because I've, I'm working with someone else on that. And I've probably been down seven or eight times now. I've had a, a good few sessions down there, put a lot of hours in, and the owl's just not been coming down. So I've done all the B-roll, everything like that. I just need the finished article. I've also been working on a Badger, Badger film, which is um, using the new cam traction stuff that I've got. I've had some great images, so we're just putting the finishing touches to that one. That's going to be coming out soon. So the films are there. They will be coming out, but... <laughs> Moving house, not good. So that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for sticking with it. Uh, quick review of this new tripod setup. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. If you press that bell, you'll get a bell notification when the new films start coming out. And they will be coming out as soon as we're in that, that new place. We have a ton of films to, to get done and projects. It's gonna be really interesting. Can't wait for that. Right, I'm off, guys, now. This wins, hopefully a bit in a bit 50 mile an hour winds today it's uh, luckily there's no big trees to come down they're all uh, they're all pretty small ones around here but you take care out there and we'll see you on the next one <laughs>